We're out here in Linville Gorge today to look at rappelling, the difference between rappelling and lowering, and also a couple ways to back up a rappel. Here the climber is getting ready to do a rappel. They've loaded their belay device, and now they're leaning back on the system. You'll notice that the rope is through the anchor, but it is not moving. As the climber descends, they move over the rope. Here the climber is set up for a self-lower. The climber is using a grigri to lower themselves. In lowering, the rope moves through the anchor, as you can see here. The climber also moves over the rope, but the difference is the rope is moving through the anchor, creating a self-lower. When we're rappelling, we're trying to create friction on the rope. If we just hold onto the rope, it'd be really hard to go down it, it'd burn our hands. So we need some sort of device that creates friction or bends. So when we use a plate style device like this Petzl Reverso, we can clip it to our harness. This device, we put the rope in it, and it actually creates three bends. It creates one where the rope goes in, it creates another around the carabiner, and yet another around where the rope comes out. This provides enough friction for us to be able to descend comfortably with our hands. When rappelling, it is a good idea to have a backup. Here, the climber attaches themselves to their rappel device. They've extended it out so that they can use a backup or third hand off of their belay loop. Many times, these backups are friction hitches, which is just wrapping some sort of cord around a rope. Here you can see the climber is wrapping a cord around the rope to create what's called an auto block. The climber tests it before they start to use it. Now that the climber has the auto block on, they can start to descend down the rope, knowing that if they let go, the friction hitch will catch. Another way to back up a system is to have two ropes in the system. Here, the climber attaches themselves to the main rope or the rappel line. The other climber has them on a belay line through a munter hitch. Here, if the climber lets go, then the belay that the other climber has them on will arrest their fall. If we have two climbers, one climber can lower the other climber down the cliff line. This allows the climber that's being lowered to have their hands free. Here, we also would like to back this up. The climber that is going to lower the climber down the cliff ties off the munter hitch so that they can go hands-free and put on a friction hitch. And in this case, that's an auto block. Once they get this on, the climber could then let go and not let the other climber fall. We have covered a lot of information on lowering and repelling here today. Make sure you practice this in a safe environment.